Alright, this one here is a 2000 Toyota Avalon. It has the uh, V6 3 liter. I have a check engine light. I'm not sure if it's happening right now, but it's actually flashing. So if we start this up. Okay, the light's just on right now. We put it in gear. All right, after I started it up and put it in gear, you see the light is flashing, so I have a definite misfire. And I have a, a couple codes. I'll put it back in park. It may stop flashing. But I have a couple codes. A stupid light on. Turn that off so you could see. Now, I was looking at this one yesterday, but we finally sold the job. So, all right, so the codes I have are a Random misfire, 300, a 1, a 4, a 6, and a system lean bank 1. Right now, I'm going to look at the misfires. Um, and the system lean, I think, is tied into this. But 1, 4, and 6 aren't companion cylinders. This one goes uh, 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. So, I'm really... I'm not sure for, of a link here, but the only thing I could do and at this point with this car is it is misfiring. You saw the check engine light flashing. And if I go into my data stream, if it's boots, I go to my misfire data. You can see that it's actually misfiring on number one. Put it in gear it'll probably go higher. My light's flashing again. And my misfire counts keep climbing, but there's climbing, but there's uh, nothing on four and six, just a total down here. So at this point, I'm just gonna concentrate on number one. I'm sure whatever happened with four and six will happen sooner or later probably whenever I think the car is done <laughs> but I'll show you what I ran across out there all right so I'm in the shop and I don't always want to graph everything or you know check everything I if, if the swap is easy I'll do it so you have in the front cylinders two four and six and in the back <clears throat> there's number one and I was able to get to that coil pretty easily. So I switched plugs and coils on one and two because two didn't have an issue, four and six potentially. And my misfire stays at number one. Now, the next thing, just because, like I said, you're in the shop, you pull a coil out, you're just starting to misfire. And you can see now number two is climbing up but I don't know if you can hear it, but when you pull them out, you can actually hear the arc. Now, it's hard to get back in here, but same thing. I pulled that out and I could hear that coil arcing as well. So, and I switched everything, so I, I didn't believe I'm dealing with um, a spark issue. You know, so the next, I went to fuel, I just uh, grabbed the simple mechanic stethoscope that I've bent somewhere before, and I'm listening to the injector, concentrating on number one, where is my problem, and I hear it clicking. So my next step was to uh, either check compression in that cylinder or um, do a uh, injector 
test, you know, with the fuel pressure gauge and just energize the injector and see if the fuel gauge drops, see if it's clicking, but it's clogged. And that's where I ran into this next issue. All right, so I won't bore you with the whole setup I had, but I had uh, this connector here, and you take that bolt out where the uh, banjo fitting is for the fuel pressure, and then I hooked up the fuel pressure gauge because I already had that plug out, like I said, and it wasn't that fun to do with the intake in the way, so I figured I would do the fuel pressure and check for if the, when I fire the injector by grounding it, if the fuel pressure actually dropped. But I never even got that far because I just hooked up the test light. I'm over to battery negative there and I'm hooked up to the injector. I'll move this vacuum line out of the way so you can see I'm hooked up back probing the injector and the same thing if you, you know, if you have power on one side and then if you unplug it power goes away so that would be the control side so but I actually had it running when I was doing this just because I was trying to do stuff quick and I noticed when I plugged the test light in the misfire went away which was weird so I'm hoping someone can explain that to me but I'll show that all right, so the car's running. I don't know if you can hear the misfire, but it's, it's misfiring a little bit. And if you look at my count on the scanner, it's jumping all over the place. Now I still have my wire hooked up to the control side of that suspect cylinder. And <clears throat> here's hooked up to my little light bulb test light. And then I just touch this to ground and the engine smooths out. And if you look, I don't know if you can see it with this, but it, you can see it flashing. That's the control side. So with the test light in the circuit, I'm not showing any misfires. But if I take off my jumper lead, it started misfiring. And then my counts went back up. So that's odd to me. And I'm not sure why that happened. And that should probably drop back down in a second to the process data. But it smoothed back out. So even though I hear the injector clicking, and when I unplug it, it stops clicking, now I'm going to graph it. All right, so here's my test lead going over to the uh, jumper on the control side. And I have my black to ground over there. And here's the red for the scan tool. Now when I hook up there for the lab scope, when I graph this injector, you can see there's a weird little pump right here. And I'm not the uh, greatest at what all this stuff means. I just learn as I go. So um, I just wanted to compare that to a known good one, which is number two. So I put a little T-pin in there. And if I hook up my lab scope to that, you can see this signal is a lot cleaner. There's just clean. And I, since I'm having this issue with the intermittent misfire, so there's that little hump. And then I decided, I wonder what it looked like whenever I actually hook it up to the test light. Sorry, I dropped that. When I hooked it up to the test light and made it quit misfiring, I wonder what that looks like. So. My misfire went away. It's smooth. I'm just gonna piggyback this on to there and look at the signal. And you can see that little hump 
moved further away, which is also weird. So, I'm gonna take it off. It's the wrong one. If I take the uh, test light out of the picture, like that, then it goes back to that one again. So there's something going on on the injector circuit. So the, the next step I did was a, uh, I'm gonna do a current ramp test. You can also see on the clean one where my, uh, my voltage spike is a lot higher. If I take it back over to the bad one, you see I get intermittent peaks, but it's nowhere near as high. I'm, I'm thinking I have a shorted injector, so we will do a uh, current ramp test. All right, so I'm on the known good one. I have my snap-on low current probe, and there is the light off. There is the current ramp of a known good injector. You can see there is a slight little double hump there, but it looks to be normal from the patterns that I saw. So let's go over to the bad one. So here's my bad one, and you can see a distinct drop off, which almost seems like I probably have a, you know, a short or something inside. I did ohm check them, they're both at 15 ohms or something like that, so there's nothing open when it's closed, but it might open up partially, you know, when it's operating. But notice the uh, pulse width you know, bouncing back and forth here. And it's pretty wide, which would kind of fit my system lean code, because the computer is trying to energize it longer, probably to richen up the mixture. If you look at the fuel trims on the scanner, I'm in the 20% long term, zero short term, but it's, there's definitely an issue. But when I, I have, now I still have my test light hooked up and my ground is not hooked up. But if I hook this ground up here, watch what happens to the fuel trim. When it, when it starts, or watch what happens to the uh, pulse width. When it starts to uh, not misfire, it decreases, you know, by a few, I don't know, a millisecond or something. So there is something going on in that injector circuit. I. If I take it back off, get it to start misfiring, you see how it increases. So something with this stupid little test light is helping the computer energize a most likely faulty injector with this stuff. So I'm gonna replace the injector and see where that goes. All right, so with it running, for all you smart guys with the, uh, want to see like pimple hump and all that stuff. So I'm hooked up to my bad one still, and I'm on one millisecond. You know, here's the, uh, the duty cycle ground, and then it's on its way back up. So if I pause it and play the movie back, you see there's my little hump that really shouldn't be there, I don't think. From, uh, that's not on the known good one. So if I take the while, because I am at one millisecond, but you can see if I can get there that there is confirmation of you know the the, uh, the panel opening and, and closing electrically. But if I take this and hook up to my known good one and then I uh, play it and make sure I have a good connection here 
and just play that one. And pause it. And scroll through. And we'll look for the tinsel hump one. I'm a known good one. And if I can get there, that for and everybody, it's a little bit more distinct of a uh, pinnel hump. So I believe I'm dealing with a partially open injector, maybe even clogged mechanically. So once again, we'll go change that and hopefully this one can leave. All right, we got it all back together. Have a new injector and number one. Have it instrumented with the low current probe and the my jumper wire for the voltage and I'm hooked up on the voltage side. I have a good signal, looks just like the other ones, that weird little hump and all that stuff that I was getting before is now gone. The car isn't misfiring. And then if I, you know, take this off and go to my known good one, you can see I have the same signal, so I'm comfortable with that. And then on the uh, on the low current amp probe, you can see that the double hump that I used to have is gone. There is a slight little nick or whatever in this signal, but they all have that. That seems to be a known good signal because if I go to that's my new one and then if I take this off and then I go to my known good one from the testing standpoint before it's the same signal so that is a known good injector current ramp for a 2000 Toyota Avalon 3 liter so we can call this one fixed. Thanks for watching.